Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if there's a specific personality profile that we would see in women who are romantically attracted to serial killers and other famous murders. So people that have been convicted and are in prison. So we see that when this happens, these individuals receive a lot of romantic interest. They receive love letters and sometimes marriage proposals. Now, I've also heard this question as it relates to specific killers. So people have asked, why do people write letters to Chris Watts? Why have they written letters to Scott Peterson or Ted Bundy? So I'll try to answer this question and kind of cover these other questions as well as I talk about this kind of phenomenon we see. So when we look at this construct in general, Again, we look at some of the more famous killers. We see they do receive a lot of letters, sometimes marriage proposals. This has happened with Scott Peterson, who was convicted of murdering his pregnant wife. The warden of San Quentin Prison received over 30 phone calls within a day of Scott Peterson being incarcerated there. We see that Ted Bundy received a number of romantic interest type letters, and a lot of women went into the courtroom while he was being tried. They watched the trial. We see the same thing with Lyle Menendez, who committed double parasite. He conspired with his brother Eric to kill their parents. We see the same thing with Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, and with Chris Watts, who murdered his pregnant wife and his two daughters. So with these situations, I think a lot of people become kind of confused because it doesn't really seem to matter who these particular murderers killed but just rather that there was a serious crime. So all murder is wrong, all murder is bad, but you could see how maybe some of these individuals would be attractive based on the idea that maybe they didn't do it or that they've kind of done their time for the crime. You could also say maybe some of them had a reason. Like if you look at Lyle Menendez, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but I could understand how somebody might believe, well, he's done his time, he committed a murder, but ostensibly he was abused, and that was the reason he committed the murder. So I could see how maybe somebody would think that he was a better choice than, say, Chris Watts. But what happens when you look at people like Chris Watts and Scott Peterson, they're not ideal in any sense, right, because they murdered their wives, or they were convicted of murdering their wives. So why would somebody be interested in an individual like that when, of course, if somehow they got out of prison and those people got together, that individual who is romantically interested in the killer would be living with the killer. So there doesn't really seem to be an end game strategy. On top of that, of course, the chances of any of these people being released is pretty unlikely. Well, Ted Bundy was executed, for example. But even with like Chris Watts and Scott Peterson and Lyle Menendez, they're likely going to serve life in prison. I don't see really any chance that any of them are going to be released. So again, we look at the fact that they killed people rather than who they killed. That seems to be what's important for people who are romantically interested. And we look at other serious crimes, like people who steal a lot of money, they don't really seem to get a lot of these letters. So it's something about the murderous component. And this really brings us over to the idea that psychopathy could be involved. So as I talk about this phenomenon, I'm really going to be referring mostly to women who are attracted to men. So women who didn't commit a crime who are attracted to men who committed murder. Now this particular phenomenon actually has a name. It's called hybristophilia, and there's been a lot of speculation as to what causes it. There's even speculation that there's kind of a passive type of hybristophilia and an aggressive type. So with the passive type, somebody's romantically interested in a murder, but not interested in committing any crimes. Now with the aggressive type, a woman would be interested in that man, I guess, getting out of prison, or whether he does or not, still committing crimes. So kind of taking whatever his criminal actions were and continuing that behavior, right? Expanding on that. So, like I mentioned, there's a lot of speculation on this, and I've seen a number of different theories as to what causes this. One theory is that a murderer is interpreted as strong. Somebody who kills must be strong and that a woman could be attracted to somebody who's strong. There's this idea that some women want to change men, and the bigger the potential change, the more rewarding that would be. 
and there's really few types of behavior that we consider worse than murder. So to change a murder would be like a great accomplishment and somehow romantically fulfilling, like a fantasy of some type. There's this idea that a woman would believe that the man is innocent and that she's going to be there to support him. And when he's eventually found innocent in reality, they'll be together. And again, kind of a fantasy. I've seen another theory that the relationship is safe Right, the man's in prison, so the woman doesn't have to have any physical interaction. She can always be safe outside the prison. And another theory that's pretty popular is it's simply the idea of being near someone who's high profile in some way. So attracting the attention of somebody who has attracted attention, even if for a bad reason, even if they're notorious as opposed to famous. But the reality is, with all the speculation, is that nobody knows. And I think that personality could explain this fairly well although there is no perfect explanation that we have available for this. And the idea with personality is there must be some sort of profile. So if we look at women who are attracted to these murders, there must be a trend that we see in terms of their personality profile. And to help answer this question, I used an article that really looked at this in depth and a few other articles, and I'll put those references in the description for this video. So what we see with hybristophilia is that the act of murder itself may not be what's attractive, but rather there's a theory that it's the psychopathy behind that that would be attractive. And if we consider some of the people I mentioned before, like Chris Watts and Scott Peterson and Ted Bundy, for example, we see a lot of speculation that they have psychopathic characteristics. We see that experts that were engaged with Ted Bundy determined he was psychopathic, Although, of course, we don't know that for sure, but that's what they reported. So we see that maybe it's the psychopathy, maybe it's the personality profile linked to those type of murders that's more important than the fact that the person is a murderer. Although, again, the high profile nature, I think, does maybe attract some people. But either way, we see that this particular study that I'm looking at that gave a lot of information about this asked really two questions. Are women particularly attracted to men who have marked psychopathic personality traits? That's the first question. And the second question is, what types of women seem to be attracted to men with these traits? So to get into the answers to these questions, we have to take a look at what these traits are. And I've covered this in detail in videos before, so I'm just going to give kind of a quick overview of psychopathy here. Psychopathy can be divided into two factors, so two types, factor one and factor two. And factor one has two components, affective and interpersonal. And specifically in this study, they broke factor one down in these two components for the analysis. That's why I'm really mentioning that here. The affective component has lack of guilt, lack of empathy, lack of remorse, and a shallow affect. So somebody's not really deep or sensitive. They don't have depth to them. The interpersonal facet has glibness, superficial charm, a grandiose sense of self-worth, lying, and manipulation. Now factor two, I'm just going to keep factor two together and not look at the facets. Factor two really has sensation seeking, impulsivity, irresponsibility, and criminality. So engaging in a lot of criminal behavior. Factor two has a much closer relationship to antisocial personality disorder, which is a mental disorder, a cluster B personality disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. So as we can see from these characteristics, neither one seemed particularly appealing at a romantic level, or really almost at any level. But we see in the prior literature, before the study that I'm talking about here today, we see there's really mixed results about the attraction to psychopaths. We see studies that show that individuals aren't generally attracted to people who are psychopathic. We also see studies that indicate that people who have psychopathic traits themselves are more likely to be attracted to psychopaths. And similar to this, we see studies that suggest that maybe individuals with low levels of psychopathic traits are attracted to people who are psychopathic. For example, we see research that says that some women who are vulnerable, trusting, loyal, cooperative, sentimental, and dependent have a higher probability of being attracted to psychopaths. And the last popular theory we see in the prior research is that individuals who have low levels of self-esteem are attracted to psychopathic individuals or otherwise to individuals who are highly manipulative. And if we look at kind of 
mental health treatment, if I look at my clinical experience, I see some support for this theory. I've seen instances where people who have low self-esteem do seem to be attracted to people who are highly manipulative. So that one could be a possibility. But moving back to this study and these two questions, are women attracted to psychopaths? And if so, for those that are, what type of personality profile will we see with those women? So to answer this first question, are women attracted to psychopaths? Generally, the answer is no. Now, this requires some explaining because, of course, there are exceptions. But overall, psychopathy is not particularly attractive to women. Now, looking at more of the specifics here, because as I mentioned, it's not just that simple, we see that when we look at traits in men, not only psychopathy, but other extreme personality profiles, like the personality disorders that would be in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, we see that this study looked at specific characteristics. So they looked at factor one, psychopathy, and split it between affective and interpersonal. They looked at factor two, psychopathy, but they also looked at schizotypal, borderline, histrionic, narcissistic, and dependent. So it's schizotypal, we see characteristics like odd thinking, magical thinking. It's kind of on a continuum with schizophrenia. That's one of the theories. With borderline, we see characteristics like frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, anger, impulsivity, a feeling of emptiness. With histrionic, we see characteristics like being shallow, which is consistent with psychopathy, but also being forward and provocative. With narcissism, we see someone who believes they're special or unique. They have a sense of entitlement. They require admiration, and they tend to be jealous of other people. And with dependent personality disorder, what we see there is someone who relies on somebody else for support to an excessive degree. So they looked at all these personality traits, again, not just the psychopathy, and they also looked at the time interest. So attraction, in a sense, is dependent on what somebody anticipates in terms of how long that relationship is going to last. So if somebody's attracted to somebody to date them, that's different than being attracted to somebody for a short-term relationship or a long-term relationship. So they looked at those three levels of anticipated time. So even though the participants in the study didn't seem to have a particular affinity toward psychopathy, the romantic preferences for factor one psychopathy traits were higher than for most of the other personality disorder features, including the factor two psychopathic traits. So what we see here is that the participants expressed preferences for psychopathic traits as a function of anticipated time. So this interest was the highest for the dating relationship and the lowest for the long-term relationship. And this really indicates that psychopathic traits may be more attractive to others in the short term. Now, when we look at the other personality disorder features, all those other personality disorders I mentioned, like histrionic and borderline, we see kind of the same stair-step pattern, meaning the attraction level was higher for dating, and then a little bit lower for short term, and then a little bit lower than that for long term. And this stair-step pattern was consistent for all of the different personality features. Now, what really stands out here is specifically for factor one in the affective facet, so the lack of guilt, empathy, remorse, and shallow affect, that was particularly high for interest in dating, much higher than for any of the other personality disorder features that were covered in the study. And what we see is, even though the other ones were fairly similar, on the higher end, we have psychopathy in terms of interest, dependent personality disorder, histrionic and narcissistic personality disorder, and on the low end, schizotypal and borderline, meaning the schizotypal and borderline personality disorder features were the least attractive to the women in the study. So this brings me to the second question. Do we see a particular personality profile associated with the women attracted to these murders? And what they found here in the study is that women with marked personality disorder features, including cluster B personality disorder pathology, so that would be antisocial, borderline, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorders, these participants were more inclined than other women to endorse a preference for psychopathic males as well as males with other personality disorder features. So we're not necessarily just talking about psychopathy here, but all extreme personality disorder features. So this is pretty interesting because this kind of breaks away from, again, just psychopathy. So women with extreme personality traits 
are attracted to men with extreme personality traits. So that's really a pretty interesting finding. So this expands beyond murder, this expands beyond, again, psychopathy, and moves into all psychopathology related to personalities. So taking a look at the personality disorder pathology specifically, it's important to understand when looking at the study, they looked at features that were not necessarily included in the DSM because there are still areas of study. So they talk about some personality disorders that aren't actually officially personality disorders in the DSM, again, because they're still studied. They also looked at personality disorders, of course, that are in the DSM. So what they found here is that females with schizotypal, antisocial, paranoid, borderline, avoidant, and dependent personality disorder features, as well as passive-aggressive, self-defeating, and sadistic personality disorder features. Now those three, of course, aren't official personality disorders, but these women indicated a preference for marked personality disorder features in males. But women with schizoid, histrionic, and obsessive-compulsive personality disorder traits did not express a romantic preference for extreme personality disorder features in males. So taking a step back and looking at all these findings, what does all this mean? Well, at first glance, it appears that women may not be particularly attracted to psychopathic traits. Women report a greater interest in men with low, as opposed to high, psychopathic traits for long-term relationships. And the same is true for other personality disorder features. So in general, women aren't attracted to personality disorder features. However, when a romantic interest is present, the personality disorder features in those women tend to be elevated. Now, if we look at some of these specific cases, we can see these letters, some of them are made public. The letters sent to Chris Watts, some of those have been made public as part of the way the correction systems work. So you can look at some of these letters written to these different killers, and you can see in those letters, without making a diagnosis, but rather just speculating, you can see some indications that maybe some personality disorder features are present. If you read a lot of those letters, these letters that women write to these killers, they don't always seem to be kind of within the typical patterns of personality profiles, right? I mean, we see some kind of extreme traits, as I mentioned. So this explanation really does kind of make sense. As I talked about before, there's really fairly good evidence available that individuals like Chris Watts, or Ted Bundy, or Scott Peterson would not make ideal romantic partners. So at the very least, it's a poor decision to try to enter into any type of romantic relationship with somebody like this. But on the other end, there could be some mental disorder, specifically personality disorder type events occurring there. We could see this type of psychopathology there. So one of the questions I hear sometimes is, should women that have this attraction go and seek treatment from a mental health counselor? Well, I believe the treatment from a mental health counselor is always a good idea, but my answer would be yes. Probably it would be good to talk to a mental health counselor and try to sort through some of the feelings. And maybe sometimes it's legitimate and has nothing to do with personality disorder pathology. And in that case, again, I don't know how it would work because the murderer is in prison for life, but either way it might not involve psychopathology. But again, in many cases it probably does. And it's a good idea to sort through those feelings and thoughts and behaviors and maybe work toward goals that are more pro-social and would give a better opportunity of having a productive romantic relationship. So in this video I've talked about this idea that women aren't generally attracted to psychopaths. So who would be the ideal mate from a personality perspective, specifically looking at this one study? Well, high levels of conscientiousness, relatively high levels of agreeableness, and low levels of neuroticism characterize a male that a woman would typically be attracted to. So what's interesting about that, of course, is that psychopaths also have the low level of neuroticism, but they typically would not have high levels of conscientiousness, and certainly, in most instances, would not have a high level of agreeableness, as low agreeableness is a core feature of psychopathy. So either way, this is a particularly interesting topic. I know whenever I talk about topics like this, there are going to be a lot of people who agree or disagree with me who have other opinions. Please put those opinions in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of what personality profile is associated with being attracted to a murder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.